We have finally made it out to test out the Apollo Go out in the wild. Hey ho, let's Apollo go. go on, I'm going. Go faster. I'm Apollo going. Apollo go. I've got to turn it on first, do the kickstand. No go, Apollo, no go. go. Woo! Right, we're just going over some bumpy ground, but obviously this is more like an urban commuter style scooter, not in the UK, ofs but across the globe. Um, it's got a bit of suspension, front and rear, but as I've said, it is made for the harder grounds in life. It's made for the high road. Anyway, first of all, because we've got a full battery, we're gonna do a speed run and a hill climb test. We're now ready for the speed run. This is built to go just over 20 miles an hour. It's a dual motor, dual 350 motored. So 700 nominal power, it's due to just go over just about 20 mile per hour. We're gonna hit this on a very slight downhill and then it plateaus out into a flat. And um, I'm hoping for big things. Toby, you are going to try and keep up on the one wheel, aren't you? I'll do my best. Let's Apollo go go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, push start. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is restricted. Oh. Freaking amateur God. hour right here. Goddamn communists have restricted the scooter. We're now ready, finally, for the speed run. Let's go. This is quite quick. I'm going 40 kilometers. 41. Ah! Bumpy! Ah! 42! 43! I've maxed out of 43 kilometers. That was really fast and it got there very, very quickly. You, how fast were you going on that Vanderveel? As fast as it could go. Yeah, so let's say 18 mile an hour maybe. I know, but I hit a B at probably <laughs> about 40 miles an hour closing speed. <laughs> no, that genuinely, that felt really quick. 43 kilometers an hour. What's that in miles per hour? 25 fast. or something? I don't know. Fast, yeah. yeah, 20 fast. You were shifting. Yeah, I, it really was Apollo going, wasn't it? I mean, the, the one wheel was going beep, 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 the whole way. There you go. So, faster than a one wheel. Big claim that is. Now we're going to hit the hill, the hill, Toby, to the top, on, on your first whistle. One, go! Come baby, come on baby. Dual motor, pick the good route, it's a bit bouncy, this hill is terrible for potholes. 22, 21, it's climbing still. It's climbing, it's slowing though. 17 kilometers this is. Still going, 14, it's a steep hill, 20% gradient. Oh yes, come on, come on, come on. Back to 16, we're climbing again now on the flat. It's done me well. Ah, we're through. It started well, yeah. as I hit the hill, it's a steep hill. It's lots of potholes, small wheels. It was not struggling, but it definitely went down to about 17 kilometers an hour. So it's that 11 mile an hour, something like that, 10 mile an hour. So not slow. It made, I never thought it wasn't going to make it, but it wasn't accelerating up the hill. Can you reveal the numbers? I don't, I can't see those. Wait and see in the video. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, bugger. It was 38 seconds. 38 seconds. A respectable 38 yeah, seconds. I don't think that's bad. That's I don't think that's bad. Like that. We've already done the speed run and it would have taken a little bit of juice out of her. Right, on to the brake test. Let's go. So we've completed the hill, we're on our way to the brake test, but on the way, I just want to show you how good the regen brake is. So well, we have- seen what the battery was at. Well, the battery's at 76% currently, because we have been hacking it around a little bit. But um, you can use the rear drum, but I'm just using the regen. So look, this is steep. I'm rolling, free rolling. Put the regen on, set it to 10. Both motors are working. It almost drops me to a standstill. So I'll come up again, hitting the regen. I'm on the steepest part of the hill now, look. Comes to a stop almost. Really, really good braking. So first of all, I'm not using wear and tear on my brakes or the shoes the drum, but also I'm recharging my battery. And also, and also I can graduate it so I can set how powerful I want that regen to be or, or not powerful if I like. So it's really customizable to your own preferences. We're gonna go back up this hill now, a nice smooth pace. I'm gonna give you a bit of an idea about this ride. We're on very, very smooth ground right now. 16 kilometers an hour, about nine mile an hour, probably 10 mile an hour actually, just cruising along. It's very smooth. It feels narrow, the deck's narrow, but I've, there's definitely enough room for one foot behind the other. And obviously I've got size 11s. The acceleration is very, very smooth, really smooth. The handlebars are narrow, but they don't feel uncomfortable. There's a little bit of rattle when you hit the bigger bumps, 
But as I've said, these are for urban areas. So it's not so important for it to be off-road capable, although I'm sure it can handle a little bit of roughage. Okay, we are here, the brake test destination. We're going to do three very quick tests. We're gonna do them from 15 miles an hour down to zero. One, just with the rear drum. The second is just gonna be the regen. And then the third will be with both. And we'll just measure the distance in meters or millimeters or centimeters. And we will let you know the results straight away. Let's hit it. First, first will be the rear drum on its own. That is just the rear brake. So, the nose, in line there, Tobes. I'm going with one. About here. Yeah, bit further, bit further. Yeah, closer to 13 feet. It's just over, well, it's about 393. 393 centimeters is what it is, just with the rear brake, okay? So that's just with the rear drum from 15 MPH or 25 kilometers per hour. It's getting very windy out here. Now to do the regen on its own. Regen on its own. Toby, come here. We need more. It's in line. Measure. It's in line with this dog poo. Oh, so it stopped as short as the dog poo. We can measure that. So from the end of the tape, which is currently at 732 centimeters, 7.32 meters, it's probably around another meter. So we're going to go about 8.3 meters to the turd. And that is with the dual regen brakes on their own. And now we're going to couple them together. We're going on to the turd test. The turd test. <laughs> so onto the turd test. Do you know why? <laughs> that was the G4. I might do that again. It's a bit of a knack pressing that and squeezing that. So you're using your fingers and your thumb and you're not really holding on to that at all. Yeah. So I feel like I want to do that again. The first one was 470, so 4.7. So I would say that's probably not as good as the first one, is it? I'm going to try harder. That was a bit better. That was a peach. That was a bit better. 377. <laughs> I think it's worse. No, it was 390 was the first one. Oh, was it? Yeah. I think the difficulty is when you pull that on its own, you can really squeeze into that with your hand. Let me come in. So do you see? So when I pull that brake on its own, three finger lever, I can really grip everything tight. When I'm trying to do the regen brake as well with my thumb, I don't have the same level as grip because I don't have my thumb to grip the brake, so I'm trying to pull that as hard as I can and press that. If I could get used to that, I reckon we could shave another 15 centimeters off at least. <laughs> Both really good ways of braking. Clearly it brakes fast. I'll tell you what accelerates quickly. I'm, I'm only going 20 meters up there and I can get up to 25 kilometers an hour easily. I'm having to feather the speed. So really nippy little machine and the brakes are excellent. I'm just gonna hit up this grass, see if it can handle it at all. It's quite thick and very soft. See, look at that. It's got a bit of suspension, it's got enough suspension to handle some bumpy ground. Like we said, it's not designed for it, but like all Apollos, it's a pretty capable machine. It's really nippy. On this smooth tarmac, it's lovely. Right, let's take it over some of the rougher terrain, see if it handles that in the same way. Well, I'm purposefully going through potholes here. Obviously, look, a bit of water. We got IP ratings coming out of our ears. Uh oh, there's a gang of hooligans approaching. We don't want them to steal our go, so we better go go. Oh, whoa! Kick that tail. Sweet slide, dude. Oh, boink. Wow, that's really bumpy. I don't know if you can see that. It's not nice terrain. Pretty much like every road in England, to be honest. Obviously, don't use it on public roads. This is a fun scooter. Look how fast the acceleration is. I was up to 40, 40 kilometers an hour then in seconds. I mean, literally in seconds, just over 20 miles per hour. Look, watch this, I'll just start here with times. We're going 16 kilometers an hour here. I'm gonna go flat out, look. I'm at 40 already. And you know, one wheels are quick. That's a GT Toby's on. It's one of the fastest one wheels next to the GTS. And he is a very loose rider. Shucks. <laughs> and a loose guy, to be honest. <laughs> but um, 
I think you can really see the capability of this little machine. Obviously, we haven't pushed it for days and days, so we don't know the durability over time. To me, this is a really good alternative to some of the other scooters like the Vissette 9 Plus, things like that, that sort of were really fun and really quick, but maybe didn't have the technology or the waterproof ratings that we see now. I think this is what, an IP66, I think? I may be underselling it. Back to the hill again. So we've been riding for a, probably an hour altogether now. I'm gonna go back up the steep hill. I'm gonna follow Toby, he's on a one wheel. They eat these hills up. I'll see if I can keep the speed up this time. 20 degree gradient, or 20%, I should say. So he's pulling away now. I'm down to 17 kilometers an hour, 16. It's about eight or nine miles an hour. So much power in that one wheel. But it never feels like this is gonna stop. I'm just picking my route and then accelerating again. It never felt like it was going to stop, but it doesn't. It's not a, it's not an absolute beast on the hills, but compared to a single motor 350 or 500 watt, this is so much better because it's so lightweight as well. So what you're getting for your money is enough power to pretty much cope with any urban environment. And then on top of that, you've got range to go with it and a load of other features. So top scooter, really top scooter. And you can get the front wheel up. Actually, no, and there's some suspension on it. <laughs> Should we hit that sweet jump again? <laughs> send it? Oh, I'll send it. Um, that was pretty poor. And now I'm in a real... <laughs> I was trying to, you know, I was trying to look cool. Anyway, I'll... See you later. See you back at the office. <laughs> Bro. So we've talked about this in the studio, but these obviously got indicators. So you just hit them there. Can you see that flashing? You may be able to, you may not. A bit wet this hill, isn't it? Let me use the regen brake. Oh, they automatically turn off after a few seconds. Yeah. So we've got those. We've got the lights. We've got headlight. We've got the front beam light there. And we've got a rear light, which is a really nice rear light, actually, and brake lights. These new, um, or the latest generation of the throttles are really comfortable. They're a lot wider than the old ones. They're very smooth. And before, sometimes they had problems with them springing back. These feel ultra springy and ultra responsive. Look, again, I'm just using the regen now, charging up that battery. We've been riding, for, like I said, probably an hour and 20 minutes. We've done around 20 kilometers, and it's still saying, of range, it's still saying we have 22 kilometers left. I'm not sure it would get to that, but it's saying we have 59% left. So that would make it quite a large range of 40, but I don't know if that's correct because it's not going to give us all the way to zero. So I'd imagine there's another 10 to 15 kilometers of riding left, making the total around 30 kilometers, which I'm a heavy rider, 90 K, not 90 plus kgs these days. Big boy. Big boy. These got small little wheels. It's a small scooter. The motors aren't super powerful, but yeah, we've done the hill. We've done the speed runs on the hill three times. The regen may have helped a little bit, but we haven't been, you know, killing that either for the money this seems like a really good deal suspension as well why is there poo everywhere feel that wind it's nothing for the go the go eats up the wind and flies on the wind okay this is going to be really difficult in these deep i don't think it's going to do this in these deep stones this way this way this way let's get deeper I wouldn't say that was nice. I'm really impressed. Genuinely, I'm really impressed. I don't particularly love the kickstand. It's modern, you know, I get it, but don't really like that. Other than that, this is a really cool scooter. Dual motors on a scooter this small gives you so much more variability in what you can do. Usually these are just plodders, 14 mile an hour, 10 to 15 mile an hour, whatever. This can actually get you up to over 20 miles an hour and get you there fast. It climbs hills. You know, most scooters just won't get up that hill that are this size. This is such a versatile scooter from Follow. Plus it's got the IP rating of IP66 or whatever it is on the screen here. Um, it's got the range, we reckon 30 kilometers. You've got the app connectivity where you can control control your uh, acceleration, you control your top speed, you control your regen braking, you can map your rides, you can do so much in there. Indicators, you've got those lovely throttles for regen and, and um, accelerator. You've got the clever fold design now that locks it in. You've got great lighting, 360 lighting they call it. This is a fantastic scooter in its bracket, fantastic commuter, commuter scooter. I don't want to say fantastic again, but genuinely, if this scooter lasts well and is durable, we haven't tested it over a long period of time. If it does, this is an excellent scooter in that commuter bracket. Well done, Apollo. 
If you want to test out this scooter, come down to Ride and Glide and you can do a demo down there with us or just check it out in person. If not, you want to get some more info, go online or give us a call, send us an email. We are always available to chat. Go to www.rideandglide.co.uk for all that information. Check out the YouTube channel. We've done loads of um, YouTube reviews on products like this. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.